And good morning. We welcome all of you to our online worship service here this morning at Freeland Moravian Church. We're very happy and thankful for your presence with us wherever you are this morning. And first of all, we're grateful for those who've helped us with improvements to our sound system for these services. We're hoping all the audio difficulties of previous weeks are over by now. We hope that they're gone. We're grateful for all of our updates there's a photograph of our updated sound system on our Facebook page today. Today is, of course, Mother's Day. We wish a happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, to all of our families as well. May we use this day to give thanks for our mothers, to give thanks for our families. We wish a happy and a blessed Mother's Day for everybody. The flowers this morning, the flowers we have on the communion table, this morning, they are here to glorify God and in memory and to honor all mothers on this special day. We give thanks for the gift of flowers this morning. One more announcement is that we will have a youth meeting next Sunday on Zoom, next Sunday, May the 17th at 6.15 p.m. for all of our youth and youth leaders as well. We'll email you about this. We'll send the link on Zoom to you by email but please let Sandy know in the church office, let Sandy know your email address. Please contact her as soon as you can to be included on the list for email. And our opening hymn this morning, our opening hymn is hymn 603, O Jesus, I Have Promised.
and the liturgy we pray together this morning is found on the link on our Facebook page, our Liturgy for Mother's Day. Lord, on this day, set aside to honor and remember mothers, we give you thanks for our mothers. We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them, and that they received the gift of life from your hands and gave it to us. Thank you for the sacrifices they made in carrying us and giving us birth. We thank you for the women who raised us, who were our mothers in childhood. Whether birth mom, adopted mom, older sister, aunt, grandmother, stepmother, or someone else, we thank you for these women who held us and fed us, who cared for us and kissed away our pain. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they showed us and that they would be pleased to be called our moms. We pray for older moms whose children are grown. Grant them joy and satisfaction for a job well done. We pray for new moms experiencing changes they could not predict. Grant them rest and peace as they trust you for the future. We pray for pregnant women who will soon be moms. Grant them patience and good counsel in the coming months. We pray for moms who face the demands of single parenthood. Grant them strength and wisdom. We pray for moms who enjoy financial abundance. Grant them time to share with their families. We pray for moms who are raising their children in poverty. Grant them relief and justice. We pray for moms who try to balance vocation and family. Grant them courage for the living of each day. We pray for stepmoms. Grant them patience and understanding and love. We pray for moms who are separated from their children. Grant them faith and hope. We pray for moms in marriages that are in crisis. Grant them support and insight. We pray for moms who have lost children. Grant them comfort in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray for mothers who aborted their children. Grant them healing and peace. We pray for moms who gave up their children for adoption. Grant them peace and confidence as they trust in your providence. We pray for adoptive mothers. Grant them joy and gratitude for the gift you have provided. We pray for girls and women who think about being moms. Grant them wisdom and discernment. We pray for women who desperately want or wanted to be moms. Grant them grace to accept your timing and will. We pray for all women who have assumed the mother's role in a child's life. Grant them joy and the appreciation of others. We pray for moms who show us the way of faith. Grant them the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We pray for those people present who are grieving the loss of their mother in the past year. Grant them comfort and hope in Christ's resurrection and our blessing. Lord, we thank you for the gift of motherhood. We thank you for the many examples of faithful mothers in Scripture, like Sarah, Hannah, Elizabeth, and Lois. Now hear the names of other women who have inspired us by their motherly examples. Lord, we pray for all women, all of our mothers here in our midst, within our church family and our friends, those we love, those we miss, those who have loved us so well. Hear us in our prayers, gracious Savior. We are mindful this day of all these women 
and especially Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had the courage and faith to say yes to your calling. May these women gathered here today emulate these examples of faith, and may they model for all, all the rest of us, what it means to be your disciple. Bless them on this special day, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And our psalm for today is from Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5. Prayer and praise for deliverance from enemies. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. In our epistle lesson from 1 Peter, from chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builder is rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people, once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. May God bless the reading and the hearing of God's holy word for this Sunday. And this Sunday, back by popular demand, we have our children's message. And so we call all our children forward to wherever you are right now for today's children's message. And our message is a story about a people who once, years ago, they wanted to get to heaven as a group. They wanted to fly to heaven together just to see what heaven was like. And so they built what they thought might get them to heaven. They decided to build an airplane, much like we build paper airplanes. And so they took the parts they had to build together. They folded it together. And after a while, they had built slowly 
an airplane, and there it was. So the people got in their plane together, and once they were inside, they flew. And their plane went up, but couldn't go very far, and so the plane came back down again not long afterwards. And so they realized their plane, at least for getting to heaven, the plane itself was useless. And so they took the plane apart. They took the parts of the plane, began carefully taking it apart. But as they took it apart, they remembered the words Words for our scripture today, our gospel lesson today, where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And they remembered that the way for them to get to heaven was not by flying, not through an airplane, but the way to get to heaven was through the cross. And that's our children's message for today. Remember the way of the cross together. And one person is applauding today. Thank you. And let's pray. Holy God, O gracious Savior, thank you for Jesus, the way and the truth and the life, the way you show us, the life you give to us. Help us, O God, to be your people, to follow your way. Lord, may you grant to us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And again, remember this week that the work of the church continues. We're still a church, still doing ministry. The life and the work of the church goes on this week and all of our weeks ahead. You're invited to give and give generously the best you can. The way to give your offering, the link is available on our Facebook page again, the link to give online. Or you may send a contribution in through the mail to the church office here at Freeland. We are grateful for all your gifts that you bring, all the gifts you send in, and the gift of music you share as well, so many of you. We have more gifts to share with you this morning. Remembering our offering today and the God who gives to us so much, let us pray. We rely on your promise, O God, that you will not forsake us. Our pledge to you is that we will be faithful. May you accept these gifts we bring today as we take this opportunity to make our response. May you grant to us your wisdom and your courage, and may you use our gifts and our very lives to your service. This we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
Our next hymn is hymn number 757, Be Still, My Soul. Let us sing together hymn number 757.
Our gospel lesson for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. John 14, 1 through 14, and we hear these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do these works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Can you remember the most difficult goodbye you've ever had to say? Perhaps it was when your best friend moved out of state. Maybe it was the day that you dropped your child off at preschool, or the day you dropped them off at college. Maybe your most difficult goodbye was the day your favorite co-worker started working somewhere else. Or maybe it was when someone you loved went to go be with Jesus. It's not easy saying goodbye, and it's not something that we enjoy. My grandmother was particularly opposed to saying goodbye. I spent the first few years of my life in the state of Oklahoma, and my grandparents would visit me there from time to time. My grandmother couldn't stand to see me sad about her departure back to North Carolina. So, instead of telling me goodbye in person, she quietly packed up her things and snuck out of the house while I was still asleep. When I woke up, I found that she had left me some candy with a note saying she'd see me again someday. Now, if you're like my grandmother, maybe you also have a hard time saying goodbye. If that's you, then you might find this message helpful. The gospel lesson for today is part of Jesus' farewell to his disciples back before he went to the cross. And perhaps this passage seems familiar to you because it's often read at funerals as we say goodbye to our loved ones. It brings us great comfort at a funeral knowing that Jesus has prepared a place for our loved ones in his father's house. If you're like me growing up, I would hear this passage and I would imagine what God's house in heaven would look like. I imagined what all of those many rooms would look like. I would imagine God's house having a nice den with a crackling fireplace. I imagined a Lego room with infinite bricks sorted by shape and color. I imagined a room with an indoor water slide. And most importantly, I imagined everyone I had ever cared about being there. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And while I certainly don't claim to know exactly, thinking about the joy of heaven can certainly help to ease our troubled hearts. 
But while it's well and good to think about what heaven will look like when we get there in the future, what about right now? In the midst of hardship, it can be difficult to not let our hearts be troubled. Sure, you could tell someone experiencing pain and illness that they will get better eventually, but that doesn't stop the pain in that moment. And perhaps this is what Thomas needs Jesus to help him with. Now, if Thomas was like a cat, he would have no problem with his master Jesus going away to his father's house for a while. You see, cats can entertain themselves perfectly. In fact, we humans are often an inconvenience to them and their space. However, Thomas was not like a cat when it came to his relationship with Jesus. He was more like a dog. When Jesus mentions that he will be going away, perhaps Thomas in his dog brain thought, how am I supposed to be okay with this? Jesus, you are my best friend and my source of joy. I want to be with you every second of every day. Please don't leave. If you go out that door, how will I know that you will return? Now, Jesus said to Thomas in his dog brain, do not let your hearts be troubled. Because as he continues to say in verse 4, you know the way to the place I am going. To which, once again, Thomas says, hang on a minute, Jesus. Whoa, how are we supposed to know where you're going? Thanks for telling us not to be distressed. But how can we not be terrified when you're saying you're going to leave us. Sure, you're going to come back later, but again, what about right now, Jesus? We don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? So Jesus' next words to Thomas, they address the disciples' current uneasiness by adding clarity to his words from before. Jesus says, if you know me, you will know my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. In other words, heaven is not just a final destination for us to experience later. The best thing about heaven isn't a room with a hot tub full of Legos. It's not even hanging out with our dear ones from earth. The best thing about heaven is that we get to be where God is. The good news that Jesus has for Thomas and us is that in the present moment, we can be with God right now when we know God. And we know God when we know Jesus. Despite all of the hardship in the world right now, Right now is a great time to get to know God through Jesus. And so perhaps this is a challenge that the gospel poses to us this week. So, every time this week that you find your mind dwelling on places you can't go or on people you can't be with right now, I want you instead to remember that Jesus is with you wherever you are. And when you know Jesus, you will see him. I have to admit that one good thing that has come from our current situation is that I have had more opportunities to stay in touch with friends who live far away. And right now, we have lots of opportunities to stay in touch with Jesus. And there are a number of different ways that we can get to know Jesus better. So I encourage you to spend some time growing closer to him. Some of you might feel like you have known Jesus for most of your life, while to others of you, you might feel like you're just now getting to know Jesus. But even though the disciples had traveled all over the place with him, they sometimes don't really know Jesus themselves, as Jesus points out to Philip. Our confirmation class students have learned that on our journey, our journey of faith 
is never over. If you look at the Moravian seal, our motto is, Our Lamb has conquered, let us follow him. And it can be hard to follow someone when you don't know them very well. There's always more that we can learn about God in the person of Jesus. And I want to take a moment to share with you something that our confirmation class has been working on. So, I'm not sure if the camera can pick this up okay. Also, my handwriting is not the best, I will admit. But I asked our confirmation class to describe Jesus and things that we know about Jesus. There's a lot to say, right? We can talk about his life, the things that he did, how he died on the cross, rose from the grave, ascended into heaven. We can talk about some of the he did, like feeding the 5,000, walking on water. But there's many other aspects to Jesus. Jesus was a refugee who moved around from place to place. Jesus experienced homelessness. Jesus was both fully human and fully God, which I think we're all still trying to wrap our minds around. He was baptized by John the Baptist. Some refer to him as the Prince of Peace or the Lamb of God. He's our Savior, our Lord, our King. He's the reason we come to church. He's our friend. He loves us and forgives us. He's born of the Holy Spirit. His mother was Mary and his brother was James. Jesus forgives us from our sins. And there's many more things that we could say about Jesus. So maybe this is a task that you can do yourselves this week. Think about all of the things that you know about Jesus, and what are some things that you don't know? There are many things that we don't know about Jesus. Our confirmation class on the board mentioned, we know that he grew up, but there aren't a lot of details there in the gospel narrative. But there are so many ways that we can get to know Jesus. So I want to mention a few other ways that we can get to know him as well. First of all, if you're joining us for the service right now, that's one way you can get to know Jesus better. I often hear folks describe a church building as being God's house. Perhaps you've heard that before. As such, I find it quite comforting to hear that God's house has many rooms. In other words, the room you're in right now is just as much a part of God's house as the sanctuary is. Now, while Facebook can be a source of encouraging content, it can also perpetuate our anxiety about the current world situation. So perhaps you can get off of Facebook for a while after the service and spend some time learning about Jesus in the gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you have any questions about what you read about Jesus in Scripture, we welcome you to send those questions to us in a message. Another way we might get to know Jesus better is by spending some time with God in quiet reflection and meditation. Just take a moment each day to disconnect from the outside world and consider how God might be working in your life. And I find it's much easier to meditate when you have some kind of repetitive task to do. Perhaps you can reflect on who Jesus is while you're washing the dishes or playing an instrument, or knitting, or my personal favorite, mowing the lawn. Although that'd probably be easier if you have a, a riding mower. We also get to know Jesus better the same way we get to know people, through conversation. And what is prayer, if not a personal conversation between us and God? And so throughout this week, and wherever you are right now, Will you join with me in prayer as we check in with Jesus? Let us pray. Gracious Lord and God, we thank you for being the God of grace that you are. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming to us as one of us so that we can understand you and also understand the creator of the universe. 
Lord, help us throughout our week to get to know you better. May we see times of idleness and isolation as times that we can grow closer to you. Lord, we thank you for all of those in our lives who have helped us to know you by the way that they have showed love to us. Whether those persons were our our mothers, fathers, other relatives, friends, thank you for making yourself known to us through those who care about us. And again, Lord, as we continue throughout our lives, help us to ever focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 674, Renew Us All, O Lord, let us sing together. This week, I invite you to consider what that means for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.